Well, it's been a very interesting few months in the aviation world. We are going to get an update in just a moment from Miles van der Berlin. He's the founder and chief executive of SEME. Last few months, Miles, but actually today we had the news coming out that ABP is leaving South Africa. The DA is making a big story out of it, saying it's because South Africa is too friendly with the Russians. But from, from where you're sitting, you're right inside the industry. Is this a big shock? Oh, hi, let me just be on the show again. Thanks, uh, thanks for having us. Um, a few months, I mean, the last few years have just been uh, completely crazy. Um, so, uh, yeah, we were hoping it will get to a some, some calmer waters at some point. Um, we uh, work quite closely with BP at many of our stations, and we could see that their approach was changing. So it was a, it was disappointing news, but not shock news when we received it. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to fly anymore. There presumably are alternatives. There are alternatives, but in the last 12 months, we've probably seen um, four or five fuel shortages of various severities at various stations. Um, so, uh, fuel, reliable fuel um, access is becoming a concern for us. Just extrapolate that in the next year, two, three, uh, when you say it's becoming a concern, could it ground flights? Absolutely. I mean, in the last 12 months, we did have to have schedule changes due to um, fuel shortages um, in Joburg, in Cape Town, and um, along the garden route. Um, and just a few weeks ago, um, the, the, the pumps in Kimberley ran dry. So I think there are multiple reasons for um, the shortages, but uh, supply chain issues uh, do plague our day um, across all sectors, and then fuel is obviously a critical item. Airplanes use a lot of the stuff, and then they go, um, don't go far unless you can feed them. So, um, yeah, we are, we are concerned. Supply chains within South Africa or fuel actually coming into the country? Then we're going to talk beyond um, fuel, <coughs> excuse me, um, but in general, there's, there's supply of chain pressure. We're still seeing that. Um, in terms of fuel, I, I don't know of any global issues, but uh, at least up until recently, there were no refineries in South Africa, I think, producing any product at all. It was all being imported as a refined product. Um, and uh, the, the, the production of Jet A was also limited to only certain, certain sites. So it, it requires a very long planning cycle, um, I believe of two to three months for, for the orders. Um, and I know at least on, on the, with some of the shortages, that's where the issue's been, the fact that it's not, no longer locally refined, or at, at the moment at least. So what do you do in that kind of an environment? Well, if one station has, so for example, if, if Jovex still has sufficient stock, then you um, a tank of fuel is a cost to it. Effectively, you're flying the... Uh, return fuel um, in the aircraft on the way out, and then it affects consumption. Uh, it can be difficult. Uh, it can be cause load restrictions because um, you have a, a weight penalty from the extra fuel you're carrying. And in severe cases, you simply have to adapt your schedule. So uh, twice in Cape Town, we were on fuel rationing, and we had to adapt our, our schedule to, to only consume um, the, a fraction of the fuel we would normally have purchased. And we as the public, when would we be affected by I think this? You, you're affected um, more often than you realize. Um, you know, we, aren't, we, we don't uh, publicize when there's a schedule change or the reason for it. Um, so uh, in, in the background, these considerations do drive decisions. So I think probably everybody has been affected by it, whether they realize it or not is a question. It's so interesting when one looks at the aviation industry. For many years in South Africa, we were told South African Airways needed to be around. The uh, people wouldn't be able to reach uh, the different destinations if SAA were not in business. But the demise or decline, at least, to a, to a minuscule amount of the SAA flights has not really affected. We can still get flight. Seme, of course, being one of the independents that's really flourished under this new environment. Was there ever any doubt in your mind that the private sector would have been able to step in when the public sector moved out? It's always adjust. It just is uh, the nature of a market. 
So, um, you know, it was a very sudden withdrawal of a lot of capacity. So that a little bit of time was taken for the market to adjust, but it, it always would. Um, internationally, uh, carriers have, have increased, other carriers have increased the capacity. So pretty much it's all been replaced. Um, and domestically, the existing, uh, the remaining players have, have increased capacity. Um, and I wouldn't say there's a particular capacity shortfall at this point. Uh, but no, the, the debt um, argument that it's uh, critical for survival of the economy to, to keep um, any single player protected, um, I think is fundamentally fault. So how's it been going at SEMI? Last time we spoke, which is a while ago now, uh, you were on a very, almost like a warp speed growth curve. Yeah, we're continuing to grow. Our domestic um, schedule uh, or network is, is the busiest it's ever been. Um, we're flying to most destinations in most major cities in South Africa. We'll be adding East London shortly, which is uh, sort of the last one of, of, of the major centres to add. And uh, our regional expansion continues to to be part of our plans. So uh, we recently received the the approvals um, from the Botswana side to 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 operate frequencies that we've had for some time into that country. So we'll be launching Maun and, and Gaborone. Um And uh, we were with lots to follow, um, everywhere from Mozambique to Zambia to the DRC. Um, we, it's a very long cycle in, in getting the approvals from both sides, um, but we were well on track. Um, and in fact, we'll even be launching the full suit. So our regional expansion is, is what we see driving the second half of this year. So how much bigger is SEME today than it was three years ago? Three years ago, um, you know, during COVID, um, I mean, it started almost exactly this time three years ago, and uh, th then we went flying at all, so it's a bad example. But we're probably about triple our pre-COVID size now. That'd be a uh, estimation. And from what you're saying, with the new routes likely to get bigger Yes, still. indeed. So we're going to continue with the, the current growth, growth trajectory. It's, it's sustainable this rate of growth, um, but uh, certainly for, for all of this year and then probably well into next, we'll be, we'll be continuing the growth. Are you at this stage yet in the airline industry in South Africa and obviously specifically at SEME where you will now grow with the market? So in other words, as more people fly, then you will add more capacity or is there still a lot of untapped potential from where we were in the past. No, we're still encroaching. Our market share is um, increasing in, in, in absolute terms. Um, and the market is still returning from its pre-COVID levels. I haven't seen figures for about the last two months, but it was around about um, 70 to 80% of, of its pre-COVID levels um, before, uh, you know, in, in, that, in that phase. Um, it's a little unclear exactly what the full recovery will be. One of the natural results of, of the state stop sponsored competition is that effectively people are flying and um, whether they realize it or not at uh, below the cost of operating the service that made it very difficult for any um, competing airline to sustain um, but of course it gave the the incumbents the ability to um, to continue to sell a product at those levels because of the of the annual um, fiscal enhancement let's call it fun to be gentle um, so as the prices have risen, which is which is necessary, again, um, market forces will tend to decrease the, the number of, of um, passengers, um, as, as some people find that uh, it's more expensive and it exceeds their budget. So we aren't expecting 100% recovery from, from pre-COVID or two pre-COVID levels um, for a year or two yet. Um, and a lot of it does depend on the trajectory of the country's economy because uh, airline passenger volumes do track um, the economic fortunes of their nation they're in to a very large extent. And what about price wars? That seems to have been notable by its absence lately. Is this because there's still sufficient capacity to Not be Not at all. Up? I mean, the second half of January is a natural slump in the market as everybody returns to, to, to work. And we saw one player operating um, excessive capacity and to some destinations at extremely low prices. So, for example, you could fly to Durban um, for 360 rand, including all taxes and VAT and, and everything, um, which is which is well below the cost to, uh, to operate the service. Um, and in some markets on certain days, we're seeing that sort of pricing continue. Um, but certainly on peak days, we see a normalization of the pricing. And I say it's normalization because if you look at the uh, cost of a ticket in South Africa and compare it to other markets, um, it's not dissimilar. 
and the cost of operating an airplane in this region or any other um, is more or less the same. Um, so uh, we don't want to take the exchange rate effects out of it. So I think if anything, flying in South Africa um, probably could be still you know, become more expensive in the, in the coming years. Um, but uh, it's simply not sustainable to be able to fly to Cape Town on a peak day for, for several thousand rand. It uh, just costs more than that to operate the service. You, know, you, you gave us some very good insight uh, last time we chatted, which I have applied, a book well in advance, and you'll get a better deal. And uh, there were certain days of the week that it is better to fly because there seems to be more capacity if memory serves. Tuesday was a good day. Tuesdays and Saturdays are traditionally the quiet days in, in the airline sector. So yes, the further out you can book, and if you can adjust your travel days to, to be a Tuesday or a Saturday, um, you, you're quite likely to get a better deal. Fridays and Sundays, I understand it, be our, our peak days. Um, and uh, certainly we, we, when you close in, um, you'll see the pricing is, is, is considerably higher um, as, as those seats are far more in demand. Um, but it can make quite a big difference if, you, if you're quite selective about your time of travel and day, to, day of travel. Miles, I've flown on CME now a number of times, and uh, I must compliment you. you. You're doing a fantastic job. Uh, I love uh, you. You're definitely my favorite airline. Uh, are you seeing this being replicated elsewhere? Because it's almost like I described you to someone the other day as being relaxed professionalism, which is which is meant to be a compliment because it's you're not. I'm not chided, or I haven't been chided ever by the hosties. But you see that happen on some airlines where the hostesses get a little bit uh, a little bit a agitated if you. Don't put your seatbelt on quickly enough, etc. Uh, is is that something that that you that kind of feedback that you get regularly? It is, and we're pleased to get it because that is our goal to be um, uh, friendly but professional at the same time. You know, I, I don't believe that putting your seatbelt on. Yeah, I remember uh, that old um, advert of one time where they had the. Uh, I knew one to hear one click was the advert um, that. that uh, because they, they were describing exactly what you, you, you're you referring to there, where it can become a little bit officious in the cabin. Um, I don't think that enhances safety in any way, shape, or form. Um, as long as your seatbelt's on before departure is all that's required. So you, there's no reason why you can't ask nicely. And there's no reason um, why you have to treat um, customers as as, um, as an inconvenience. So we certainly do um, uh, all we can to um, soften the corners and, and, and accommodate people as far as we can within the rules. Um, and, and be as pleasant as possible and make the, the, the flying experience um, as pleasant as we can. Um, you know, there are aspects to it that are, are difficult to, to um, change. You know, airport security is one that often annoys people, um, but uh, everything around that we have control over, we, we, we certainly do try and make it uh, more enjoyable. But how do you do that? How do you keep that going that culture going within an organization when you are growing so fast as you said earlier you tripled in size over the past few certainly years. it's a challenge you know we've taken uh, staff from other airlines obviously as we've grown and they all come with the culture that they have um and um you know getting people to conform i think in any business is always a difficulty but um, a consistent message and uh, the response of passengers, because passengers give feedback that's positive when they um, feel more welcome, and that drives in the right direction in itself. So I think to, to maintain a very hard line, you probably have to be uh, fairly harsh um, and, and force it that way, because I don't think people naturally want to be um, overly harsh. Whereas, uh, you know, if, if you find a middle road, um, you know, people see the acceptance of guests from the audience. What is the status with South African Airways, given that it was the giant um, and now it's it, it supposedly was going to be sold to the private sector and you would have thought that that deal could have been consummated by now. Do you have any insight into what's going on there or how you see them in the we market? We don't um, have any detailed information. We only see what's in the public domain. It is quite surprising that that um, uh, privatization partnership really hasn't moved forward in mean, well, really quite a long time now. So. Uh, we we doubt that it it has the traction they claim it has. Um, obviously, their footprint is 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 much smaller. Um, they do seem the sentiment does seem to be buoyed by the uh, billion rand bailout that they received. Um, although the Southern Public was assured there'd be no further bailouts, um, 
another billion rand was allocated in, in the recent budget speech, which was a surprise. Um, and now I'm talking about re-entering the long-haul market, I'm guessing um, on the basis of, of, of that funding. Um, but whether they um, will and, and what the exact plans are, we, we don't know. But certainly, as you pointed out right in the beginning of this, of this chat, um, the market perception of SAA has changed completely. They're no longer you know, um, are seen as, as, as the, 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 the national carrier we can't do without. And lots of people have moved on. Um, so any expansion from SAA would probably have to be done purely on the basis of merit and service um, rather than the basis of, of uh, historic reputation and, and what had almost become a social obligation to support. They would now be seen by the markers as one of the options that could be tried rather than the um, primary option that should be tried. It's you mentioned opinion. long haul. Would that be one of your ambitions to fly a semi flight? So in, in, in the short to medium term, um, uh, we wouldn't close the door on it, but it's, it's a very different kind of operation to the uh, domestic and regional operation that we run. Um, and in the post-COVID world where there's so many challenges, we uh, would probably feel that it would be biting up more than we could chew at this point. Um, and the, the long haul market is very well served. Um, in a British Airways, if you look at the capacity they're flying um, every day, uh, it's, it's substantial, um, and uh, it, it's a it's a quite a competitor to take on. Um, so we probably uh, wouldn't see ourselves even considering it seriously for for some years. And partnerships now that Comi is uh, out of the picture. Is British Airways a possible partnership for you here at Seme? You you know you are getting you are getting bigger and and, and into a realm I guess where companies are saying mm, where do I get my flight uh, benefits or my miles? Indeed, um, partnerships have always been part of our strategy, um, and we have uh, interline relationships with many of the uh, major carriers, including uh, Qatar. Um, and, and Emirates. Um, we're hoping to add BA in the coming months. It's, it's fairly far advanced. Um, and obviously, there's many forms of partnerships. So we're very much open to it. We do believe, particularly in sort of what's going to become a consolidation phase post COVID, that um, you know, if partnerships are key. And then forming new rela relationships now are, are key to our future. Because once those relationships are formed, they'll be relied upon for, for years to come. And the market's come through so much turmoil. Um, that all the uh, existing relationships kind of got uh, mixed up a bit. Um, and then generally uh, carriers are looking for new partnerships and we're certainly putting our hand up. So how does it stack up now? Where are you on the list of domestic carriers here? In I think we saw the third biggest um, uh, domestic carrier. Um, I haven't uh, validated that, that recently, um, but that's probably where we'll, the band will stay in for, for some time. As we grow, um, Airlink is number two, and uh, well, I think they're between Airlink and Safi, there are a lot more capacity than us, so it takes us a long time to, to, to creep up to them. Um, but as we expand, um, well, we'll probably pull out a gap below. So, yeah, that's where we are. We come to all that place. We don't want to be the biggest. Um, we want to run a profitable operation that's sustainable, that delivers a good service, that um, has a good reputation, and, and um, continue to build on that rather than. Um, Try and take over the world. I believe that strategy is, is not optimum, not so long term. Uh, South African aviation, particularly the airline industry, has a, has a terrible scrap heap of, of defunct airlines. Um, and uh, our, our greatest goal is to make sure that it never includes us. Miles van der Merlin is the founder and chief executive of SEME, and I'm Alec Hogg from biznews.com.